Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Friday, November 18th And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon So what is happening on this wonderful Friday, the end of the week? We got current news from around the world, the word study about the Wednesday message, and let's testify with Thule from Australia. All right, everyone, how are you doing? It is Friday. Thank God it is Friday. Yes, it is Friday. I'm sure all of you are getting ready to enjoy another awesome weekend. So I hope you guys look forward to some fun, relaxation, realization, direction through the Sunday message. But... Let's get things kicked off here together on the Morning Star Drive. So everyone, keep liking, keep commenting. Let's build the community. I know some of you out there are a little bit shy to do comments, but the one thing everyone can do is click the like button, right? So I want to hear from you guys, see how you're doing. Let's communicate through like buttons, through comments, whatever it is. I really, really enjoy seeing your comments too, all right? So uh, it is the end of the week. And you know, I thought, you know, you guys heard about my first week in Malaysia and it was bad, right? It was terrible. However, <laughs> it hasn't stopped yet. Those of you guys who see my Instagram, a couple things have happened. So, okay, so... I told you guys that uh, like a couple days ago, I kind of, you know, I put like, I have a guard, you know, the garbage in my house you know, I put some food in there and then all of a sudden I found two roaches and I was like, oh no. And then I killed those two roaches. And then uh, the next day I found another two. I was like, oh, what's going on? So uh, I was just like, God, like, is this ever going to stop? And uh, I called, um, I called the owner, but the owner, I'm going to be honest with you guys, super amazing and nice. But like I told you yesterday, already get someone to come in here, spray it down. And yesterday I sprayed it down and I, you know, I, I stayed away from the house for about a good seven, eight hours and I came back and um, I, I, you know, there was a bunch of roaches just all dead on the ground. I was like, oh, it worked. But I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay, you know, I, you guys get grossed out. I have a video of this too. I, I, should, I, I didn't put it on my uh, Instagram because I didn't want to gross people out. But in the kitchen, it wasn't too bad. The kitchen, I, was, I think it was, it was like four or five, like just in the middle of the, in the middle on the ground. So I was like, oh, they're dead. Thank God we killed them. And then I, um, nothing in my bedroom. Thank God. I th was there one? No, I think there's one. There's one in my bedroom. And then the living room, there was like another, uh, I was like uh, five. So five in the kitchen, four or five in the kitchen. There's one in the bedroom. And there's another one, two, three, four. Altogether, it came down to like 11 roaches. Like, and there's like four babies. I was like, oh my goodness. It's so gross. <laughs> it was so gross. But um, I was so thankful that, um, uh, that they, you know, like all of these roaches died and stuff like that. But it kind of, it, it, it's really interesting. I'm going to tell you guys, this, you know, this was really interesting. When you know there's roaches, like when they died and stuff, I'm picking them up and I'm, you know, throwing them away and stuff. It's like so gross and it's like, ugh, like you want to throw up and stuff. But the crazy part is, is before when I had no idea how many roaches there were or like what, what's inside the house, whatever it is, right? And, you know, honestly, I'm not grossed out like that much because I used to live in New York where it's really, really old buildings where there's rats and roaches, like flying roaches too. But either way, so I'm just like, oh, this is so gross. But the weird thing is when you don't know, like you're, I'm sleeping amongst these roaches, right? I'm walking among, like I'm, I'm with them all the time, which is kind of crazy. Like, it's only when you know you freak out and only when you know you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this, that I was actually living in this type of condition, right? And, you know, we do also know that the houses, like, you know, houses can also symbolize human being. It's a vessel, right? And I was realizing more about myself, like going, you know what? It's kind of the same thing when we have sin, right? A lot of times we don't want to think about sin. A lot of times we don't want to repent. We don't even want to think about the bad things that we do, right? And I think there's a normal human response is like, oh gosh, I don't want to look at myself and see all the bad things about myself. But, you know, we brought the spray in and they sprayed the house down. And then you got, you, you start to see all the roaches come out and you're just dying. And I thought to myself is like, yeah, you know what? This is something that's really, really important to us because think about it. How many of us really want to be living amongst 11 roaches or 11 major types of sins or whatever it is, right? And prayer in the word becomes the two big things that we really have to realize about. And one thing I realized about prayer is prayer is such an important time because it's not just about a time to... Um, 
to tell God all the things you want to say. But we also, we also have to realize that prayer is the time of meditation, reflection, where the Holy Spirit kind of inspires us and our eyes get open to ourselves, right? And that's kind of like even on the Wednesday message we'll talk a little bit later is we got to make ourselves, we got to make ourselves, right? If we're going to do things until the end, we don't just like endure, we have to make ourselves, right? And in order to make ourselves, we got to see those things that are wrong with us and we got to kill them off. And of course, um, the spray or the medicine that kills off um, kills off these like sins in us uh, is going to happen through the word, right? The word draws them all out, kills them, and we have to repent, right? And uh, this is, you know, the word is that medicine, and it and, and the word teaches us how to live. What's the right way to live so we don't live a life of sin? So when I saw that, I was really thankful and, and thankful to God. You know, even though it's like seven, eight things that have happened to me in the first two weeks, it's pretty gross. But I, I'm I'm I like it because. Uh, God helps me to realize more deeply about it, right? So that's something that I really thought um, was important that God was showing me through that. And in the same day, in the same day, uh, what else happened? Well, if you saw my Instagram, what happened is I uh, drive in the car, but for about two days, the air conditioning hasn't been going too well. Like it's like it's spewing out hot air and stuff like that too, right? So I'm like, what's going on with the car? So, you know, me... And the owner of the car were kind of like, oh, maybe it's just an air conditioning problem. But in the end, like I was driving yesterday, driving to go to a meeting and car just stopped in the middle of the road, in the middle lane, like busy, busy area. Cars are honking at me and everything else. I'm like, what the heck? Right. And I was just, I was like, what's going on? And, um, there was like some really kind military guys that came and helped me move the car over to the side of the street Oh, and then, um, you know, I took the car to the mechanic and basically the radiator was leaking water. So it was overheating. So it basically it was overheating. Uh, it was leaking water. They had to replace that. One, one part of the suspension wasn't doing well. One of the tires was, it was just a bunch of different things at the same time. And I was just outdoors in the humidity uh, under a bridge with some other homeless people. And I'm just like, oh, what, can, what else can go? God, what else can go wrong? In my first two, three weeks here in Malaysia, I was just like, what can go wrong? Like, I arrived on October 29th, so uh, it's been exactly two full weeks. Is it more than two full weeks then, right? Shouldn't it be more than two full weeks? Because if I came here on the 29th, uh, that means it's been um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. Uh, it's been about two and almost three weeks almost three weeks and kind of that's that's my life here <laughs> car was broke it took but i'm gonna tell you one thing guys um I, I know people in malaysia might not think this but fixing a car here is super cheap it was cheap man it was it was like it was like less than a hundred dollars to fix all that and it took three hours. Like most likely when you go to America, they're going to take it overnight. You're not going to get your car back for another couple of days. They did it in like three hours. I was like so shocked how fast they did it. So uh, I got my car back in the same day, just about three hours later. So I was really, really happy about that too. So that was something that I was thinking about. Like, wow, I'm so thankful that it, I, I got the car back so quickly. And now, you know, obviously uh, the air conditioning, everything else is working really, really well. And uh, it's fixed. So I'm, I'm very, 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 very happy about that. All right. So, yeah. Th so those are the two interesting things that happened to me yesterday. Um, also, hey, guys, check out the poll. Poll's very interesting. Go check out on both MSD and uh, Espresso with Sky. There's a huge difference. Like um, people who've seen Spirits in Providence on the member channel is about 38% and only about 26% uh, on Espresso with Sky. And like I said, I am expecting those numbers to go down the more people that actually vote for it because I know way more people that haven't seen any spirits or anything like that more than people who have right and it doesn't mean someone's more spiritual than another it's like this got nothing to do with that either but i found that quite interesting just to compare the two things um and especially all of you guys know it's friday it's the 18th which means uh it'll be the first day of sun seems trial first day of sun seems trial so i did go over how the trial runs uh, on my Tuesday Pravi in the Media uh, podcast. So go ahead, check that out too, the last segment, so you can know how it's actually going to work. And we're most likely looking at a trial that's going to take several months. It's going to take months for this thing to finish, but uh, it's something we really need to pray for. And the more we know, the more we can pray, and the more detailed we're able to pray. So I, I really hope that all of us here, as we have the first, uh, first day of trial, uh, that everyone is praying for the prosecutor, the judges, um, also for uh, Sunseam's lawyers, 
And, uh, you know, let's just really pray that everything happens according to God's will. Like, what is the thing that God wants from this situation right now? Okay. Uh, also, Espresso with Sky, we're going to have that video with My House is Haunted, my apartment that's haunted with that with the, the, the dreams that I kind of shared, uh, shared with you guys. But um, I'll be doing that for this week's video. All right. So let's get uh, into today's feature arts of the day. Relaxing Friday, super happy. And we're going to start off with uh, one of my favorites. This is Zeniac from the Pit Me Associates in Korea. And, uh, you know, he's doing a lot of work out there producing, mixing, and doing these types of things too. I just saw on his Instagram that he just uh, produced another song. So uh, I'm not going to play that one yet. Uh, I'm going to play uh, this one first, his self-titled song, Zeniac. I'm going to talk to him about that uh, new song that he just produced too, see if we get that going for next week. Uh, second, we have Kiro Black and Julius from Australia with Inside My Head. And we'll end things off with... A uh, brand new song that just dropped. I'm so happy about this. This is my favorite favorite song from her so far. This is from Youngse from South Africa. Uh, she's she. Uh, we played the song No Gain and Complaining just before, but this song really. I, I this is my favorite from her for sure. Uh, this song is called I Call You. I believe. I believe. Right. It's called I Call. I'm gonna just do a double check just to make sure. It's I Call You. Okay. Great song. Listen to this one. It's got such a, a, a nice, nice groove to it. So, oh, well, groove, not, not the word. It's like, it's relaxing. I like it. So this young kid from South Africa, I'm going to ask her next week to do an audio of what's the inspiration behind this song. So uh, we're going to play it for the first time today, and then we'll hear about uh, where it came from from next week. All right? So that's young kid from South Africa, brand new song that just dropped yesterday. That is, I Call You.
Just me and the voice inside my head, that's my rival. It's peaceful in my city, but I think I'm going psycho. An upside down world where people look down to their idols. Yeah, my mind space is like a hellscape. I plan on us a crazy place. Uh, so stay in my own world between reality or insanity. The lines of blood. And I don't know what's real. Connected, but at the same time disconnected, convicted in large crowds is when I'm most on my own. Take a peek through the window of my soul. I've kept the fire burning ever since I heard that winter was coming. The coldness of their heart, there's no use running, no escaping. Deep to the bone, it leaves a king shaking in his throne. Yeah. I don't know what's real. Yeah, I'm stuck. 
Yeah. 
And that is a wonderful song. That is Young Say from South Africa. New song that just dropped yesterday. That is I Call You. Uh, before that, Kiro Black and Julius from Australia with Inside My Head. And of course, featured artist of the day. That is Zeniac from PMA in Korea with a self self-titled song called Zeniac. All right. So uh, now that we got uh, the member artists out of the way, let's get into current news. What is going on around the world? And of course, before we kick into the weekend, there's a lot of things that we have to think about, a lot of things we need to pray about too. So why do we watch the world news? Three reasons. Number one, see what we need to report and pray for. Two, see what God is doing. And three, what are the things we can comfort God's heart in? So first, let's start off with uh, what's going on uh, with Russia and the Ukraine, but you know, they said that Poland was struck with uh, a missile yesterday. And latest news says, NATO says Poland probably hit by Ukrainian missile. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has told the BBC that a missile which killed two people in Poland on Tuesday was probably Ukrainian. Most likely, this is a Ukrainian air defense missile, he said, as investigations continued into the blast near the Ukrainian border. But he stressed that Russia was ultimately to blame because of its ongoing invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine itself continues to say that Russia actually fired the missile. And uh, President Zelensky of the Ukraine said, I have no doubt that this is not our missile. I believe that this was a Russian missile based on our military reports. And he said it was imperative for Ukraine to be allowed to join the investigation into the blast on the farm uh, in Poland, six kilometers from the border. Uh, Ukrainian air defense systems were activated on Tuesday when Russia launched what is believed to be its biggest wave of missile strikes in the nine, month, nine months since the invasion of February 24th. Dozens of Russian missiles targeted the country, but Ukraine says it managed to shoot most of them down. The mass attack, which occurred during the G20 summit in Indonesia, caused an international outcry, while news of a missile blast inside NATO member Poland's territory raised fears that the war might be escalating dangerously. Mr. Soltenberg uh, said NATO had pledged in response to supply a more advanced air, de uh, air defense system to Ukraine, which is not a member of the alliance, but receives extensive military aid. Polish President uh, Andrzej Duda said earlier that although a Russian-made S-300 missile was most likely to blame, there was no evidence it had been fired by the Russian side. And when asked about the possibility of peace negotiations between Moscow and Kyiv, Stoltenberg said previous attempts had shown that Russia's President Putin had no willingness to compromise and negotiate. Uh, he said, we have to understand if Putin and Russia stop fighting, uh, we will have peace. But if Zelensky and Ukraine stop fighting, then Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent sovereign nation, he said. The top U.S. general also commented on the war on Wednesday, saying there may be a political solution where politically the Russians withdraw from Ukraine. But Army General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, warned that an early military victory for Ukraine was unlikely despite its recent successes on the battlefield. So that's kind of what's happened with that. Yeah, and they said it's possibly going to it's going to be a Ukraine defense missile, not a, a Russian missile. Uh, let's go over to the U.S. midterms as more things are panning out. Uh, Republicans narrowly win back the House. Republicans have secured the 218 seats needed for a majority in the lower chamber of Congress a week after the midterm elections, the BBC's U.S. partner at CBS News projects. While the party's margin in the House of Representatives, uh, Representatives is razor thin, it's enough to stall President Joe Biden's agenda for the next two years. But Democrats will keep control of the Senate when the new Congress convenes in January. A handful of seats remain to be called. The Republicans, who had hoped to win back both uh, control of both chambers underperformed expectations in last week's midterms, but they won the seat they needed for their House majority on Wednesday when California's 27th district went to incumbent Mike Garcia. 
The Republican Party is now projected to win between 218 to 223 seats in the 435 seat House, according to CBS. But with votes in cliffhanger races still being tallied, their majority may not be clear for days or even weeks. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, who was picked by rank and file Republicans on Tuesday to be their nominee to replace Democrat Nancy Pelosi as the next Speaker of the House, celebrated having officially flipped the chamber. And in order to be elected Speaker, the House Republican minority leader must win over majority support from the 435 members of the full House. Now, President Joe Biden congratulated Mr. McCarthy and offered to work with Republicans to deliver results for Americans. Uh, and, he and he said the American people want us to get things done for them. They want us to focus on the issues that matter to them and on making their lives better. Mr. McCarthy's party had hoped that the president's relatively low popularity, stubborn inflation, and the fact that congressional maps were redrawn, redrawn by Republican-led state legislatures would add up to midterms victories for them. But the blame for last week's lackluster showing has largely landed on two party leaders, former President Donald Trump and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. On Tuesday night, the ex-president formally announced a third bid for the White House in 2024 from a ballroom at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. And in Washington on Wednesday, McConnell was renewed as Senate Minority Leader, fending off a challenge from fellow Republican Rick Scott of Florida. Uh, Non-congressional results are still trickling in more than a week after Election Day, and on Wednesday, Congresswoman Karen Bass was projected to win the race to be the next mayor of Los Angeles, uh, the second largest city in America after defeating billionaire businessman Rick Caruso. The Democrat will become the first woman to hold the office and the city's second ever black mayor. So uh, that's big congratulations over there. Uh, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of California at all with their politics and their government. Uh, it's probably one of the places I would probably never want to move to at this current moment because, man, taxes are super high and uh, the governing is very, very bad over there. But either way, uh, so it looks like the Re Republicans have gotten the House back and they still, lo they still have not gotten the, the Senate majority yet. All right. So let's move over to uh, let's go into what's happening in Iran. So in Iran, uh, Iran hands out more death sentences to anti-government protesters. Four people have been sentenced to death on the charge of enmity against God in connection with the recent anti-government protests in Iran. Revolutionary, revolutionary courts in Tehran said one of the unnamed rioters hit and killed a policeman with his car, the judiciary's Mizan news agency said. The second possessed a knife and a gun, and the third blocked traffic and caused terror, it alleged. The fourth was convicted of a knife attack, uh, Mizan reported late on Tuesday. But human rights activists condemned the death sentences, which brought the total to five since Sunday, saying they were the results of unfair trials. Well, one of the reasons is because protesters don't have access to lawyers in the interrogation phase, and they're subjected to physical and mental torture to give false confessions, and then sentenced based on the confessions, which is, you know, quite crazy, right? And this comes from the director of Norway based Iran human rights, Mahmoud Amiri Moghadam. And that's, uh, she, this was she was telling, uh, this was he was telling AFP news agency. So, so far, at least 348 protesters have been killed and 15,900 others arrested in a crackdown by security forces on what Iran's leaders have portrayed as foreign-backed riots, according to the human rights activist new agency HRANA, which is also based outside the country. The woman-led protests, uh, woman protests against clerical rule erupted after the death in custody three months ago of Masa Amini, a 22-year-old woman who was detained by morality police for allegedly breaking the strict rules on hijabs. The, ju the judiciary's announcement came after 12 people reportedly killed amid a fresh wave of unrest that began on Tuesday, and activists called for three days of demonstrations and strikes to commemorate Bloody November, a reference to the deadly crackdown in the last major nationwide protest that began on November 15th, when many Iranians reacted angrily to a sudden increase in fuel prices. So video posts, um, po videos posted on social media on Tuesday showed crowds in Tehran and other major cities chanting slogans against the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah. Tola Ali Khamenei, including death to the dictator. And at a metro station in the capital, protesters set fire to a headscarf on a platform as a crowd shouted that Ayatollah Khamenei will be toppled. And another video from a metro station appeared to show officers beating people inside a train carriage. While in a third, People were seen running and falling over as security forces allegedly opened fire. State media reported that rioters shot dead two members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, including a colonel in Bukhan and Kamyaran on Tuesday. And they also said that a cleric who was a member of the parliamentary... Um, 
Basij Resistance Force, which is controlled by the IRGC, died after being hit by a Molotov cocktail in the southern city of Shiraz. So state media have so far reported the deaths of 38 security personnel since the protests began. Uh, HRANA has put the toll at 43. So there is the news around the world, things that we can pray about and hope that uh, we can pray that God settles these matters as quickly as possible or in the way that is according to his will. Okay, so let's move on to some sporting news. Major League Baseball, the awards are being given out. Um, it was just the Cy Young Award winners was given out just recently for the best pitchers in Major League Baseball. For the American League, Cy Young Award winner, it was Justin Verlander of the Houston Astros. And this is his third, um, third win, but amazingly, he's 39. And he's got Tommy John surgery, and he's, he came back with a vengeance. He's got, he had an amazing season and uh, capping everything off by winning the World Series. And then on the, the National League, it was Miami Marlins ace, Sandy Alcantara. Uh, also, unanimous vote. And uh, this is actually only the second time that both Cy Young winners were uh, unanimous winners, right? In soccer, uh, pre in preparation for the World Cup, we have a bunch of international friendlies going on. Argentina defeated the UAE 5-0. Germany beats Oman 1-0. Poland beats Chile 1-0. Sweden and Mexico, which is a very, very good match, uh, defeats Sweden defeats Mexico 2-1. Italy beats Albania 3-1. And Peru beats Paraguay 1-0. Uh, in NBA news, we're going to go over, like, who are the points leaders so far after, like, what? We have, like, 20 games in the season. Uh, who are the points leaders? It's Luka Doncic with 34.4 points a game. He's having an amazing season. Then we have Joel Embiid with 32.3, and then Jason Tatum with 31.9. Assist leaders is Tyrese Halliburton of the Indiana Pacers, 10.3 assists a game. Then, you, of course, you have Chris Paul at 9.4 and Trey Young at 9.3. And what about rebounds? Once again, Rudy Gobert, rebound champion, 12.9 a game. Clint Capella, 11.9, and Giannis Antetokounmpo with... 11.8 and that's that's pretty amazing what he's doing there too Giannis is probably the best defensive player in the league right now at the moment he won the defensive player of the year last year or was it two years ago and he's gonna win it again he is he's so good of course on top of it he's like six foot 11 and his wingspan is like seven foot eight so that really helps out a bit too okay so there it is guys that is the top three news in sports and uh around the world hope you guys really enjoyed that helps you guys out with your prayers but you know what that means it is the golden time. And yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. I hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with the Lord is the answer. And then the Lord is my hope and joy. And then we'll end things off with path of love. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. <laughs>
heart is my pride. He is the source of my confidence. I think of him everywhere that I go, hoping I can tell someone. Los 
without end Proudly we go on Always for Providence Now and always Hope will shine Brighter than the sun This eternal Love of ours fulfilled God's will at last. The Lord our God promises will not fail, they will stand without change. Love of ours fulfilled God's will at last. The Lord our God promises will not fail, they will stand without change. And that was The Path of Love. Uh, before that, Lord is my hope and joy and the Lord is the answer. I hope you guys really enjoyed that time of praise and worship. And I hope it pray, uh, prepared your hearts so that we can get into today's, uh, today's word study. And of course, every single Friday, we go into the Wednesday message. Uh, and the message is, the end is strong. Of course, last week, we listened to Sunseam's uh, video, and that was amazing. But also, once again, our head leader is doing an amazing job with um, taking, you know, actually making the messages just from a title, scripture, and some references, right? So this week, uh, the message is, the end is strong, coming from Matthew 24, verses 3 through 14. So uh, I, for, and I know that a lot of us here, we're going to have different points that we have from each of the Wednesday messages, because we have different head leaders that emphasize different parts about it, but the core message is always going to be the same, right? So of course, this week's message, the end is strong. What does it mean to go until the end? It basically means go until the end, meaning uh, do it until you get what you actually asked for, right? Do it until that end point. And I, I think one of the points that was made that I, I thought was really um, uh, poignant was 
when you say do it till the end, it sounds burdensome in a sense where you know like it's the only reason someone's telling you to do it to the end is because it's going to be hard. Difficult tribulations and hardships is not going to be easier. But we're like, man, we got to get over all this stuff. Like when you tell me do it until the end, it means that we're going to go through some rough stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you, like think about my last three weeks. It's very timely with these messages of doing it till the end because I've had everything bad happen to me over these last three weeks, right? It's just eight, nine things. I'm just like, what else can go wrong? But, you know, you can see that when God is, you know, God is giving us this message, he knows what we're going to go through in our daily life. And he's telling us, don't worry. Like God's not sitting there saying, I'm doing all these bad things to you. What he's saying is, yeah, things, bad things are going to happen. They're going to happen in life, but you got to make it till the end because in the end is where all the grace is. In the end, where the victory is. In the end is where the answers are, right? So I'm, you know, I've been, you know, for me, I'm just like, man, Oh, I lose my luggage, police summons, lock my keys in the car. I keep the, you know, I, I, the battery died because I kept the, what do you call it? I, the batteries died because I kept the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the lights on while I was at a cafe. And then, you know, there's like uh, the roaches and uh, there's just so many things. And I'm looking at like, uh, God, but God is like going, no, 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 don't worry about it. Go until the end, right? All the best things are there at the end. So keep doing it until you get the things that you want, right? We're not, you know, if, and one of the biggest things that is most comforting about this week's message is the comforting part is we know the end. It's not a hopeless ending. There is so much hope in the ending because God is saying in the end, the best possible answer is going to come. God is granting us the best of the best things when at the end. And this is why like, one of the points was, yeah, if you only wait until the middle, you're granted something in the middle, right? Something that's average. If you get something at the very beginning, it's very, very low. You have to wait until the very end to get the best things. And if we don't understand this, then what's going to happen is we're going to get, we're going to, you know, we're not going to go until the end. And we've been praying and setting conditions for something way better and bigger, but we're going to end up with something that's kind of average. And we might think like, God, well, why that? What, I did all that for just this. And this is why we need to know correctly that the best and greatest hope is at the end, right? So this is why it's the hope that propels us and pushes us to go further and further, right? And this is how God works, right? This is how God works and this is how we should take action, right? So I, I really like that, that point of, hey, there's absolute hope because it's going to happen at the end, absolutely. So, you know, uh, the story that uh, I heard in during the message was about uh, Jesus uh, turning the water to wine, and he did it at the very, very end, right? The best was at the very end where someone, even, when someone at the party even said, man, all the choice wine is given at the beginning, and then after everyone's drunk, all the cheap wine is given, but you have given and saved the best for last kind of thing, right? So I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's something where God is always doing things throughout history. And not only through like history, think about even like nature and stuff we talked about on Sunday, right? All that stuff, trees, like a fruit tree, the fruit, the best part, the whole reason why you grew that tree, all that fruit comes when? At the end. Everything happens at the end. And God's history too is exactly the same. Right? I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about people is we kind of put all of our, you know, we put everything in at the beginning. And then we get tired along the way and we start putting less and less and less in. And it doesn't end very well. But God is the opposite. And God is saying that we have to become like this too, is we need to get better with time. Right? Like if you think about marriage, if you think about faith, if you think about relationships, the longer you're together, the better it should be. Isn't that true? Yeah, the longer you are together, the better it should be. Go even further. Think about this too, right? It's not only just like, um, uh, think about your faith. If, you, if I've been in Protestant for 24 years, shouldn't my faith be that much better after 24 years? Shouldn't I know that much more? And that's one of the problems I had being in the former faith is I was in, uh, I was in the former faith for like um, 20 years and I didn't even know that much more when I was 20 than when I was 15, Right? And it's something that we have to realize. It has to get better. Our marriages have to get better with time. Our relationships have to get better. Our church, our faith, all, you know, talking to all these things have to get better with time, right? God is working, right? And in each of our, in, like just individually too, don't you think God's doing the exact same thing with us? Wanting the very best for all of us individually. And it's all going to come at the very end, 
right? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying this as in like, you wait till the end of your life when you die, because, you know, that's way too long. But everything has its timing and things are going to end at its time. And we have to be those that understand it at that level, right? So whether, you know, your life as an individual in this history, it's going to be amazing and awesome. And we need to realize at this point Right? We have to believe and follow. We have to have hope until the very end. But know this clearly that the end is going to be strong no matter what. Right? Uh, one of the good questions that was answered uh, during the Wednesday message, and I think all of you probably heard this one, is why doesn't God just give everything right away from the beginning? Right? And the answer is look at human psychology, just the way that our minds work. Our minds don't work in the way where you get everything in the beginning, then you work even harder. No, we work towards something, right? There's a purpose, a goal. There's, there's a hope that we're looking forward to, right? Like it makes, it makes a difference when someone says to you, I will give you $10 million if you do this for me by the end of the month. And that'd be like, what the heck? That's crazy. And you would work like crazy to get it done. But what if someone says to you, yeah, I'll give you $10 million now and I want you to get it done. A lot of people won't get it done. Right? They, won't be, they won't be motivated to do it, right? We think, you, know, you, th you might think to yourself like, oh, you know, I, I probably might do better if you gave it to me first. It's like, no, that's not the, how the human brain works. Human brain is trying to do things in the most comfortable and the most laziest way. If everything was given to you at the beginning, there is no hope, no motivation, no desire, right? But if you were told something you really desperately wanted so badly would be given to you at the very end, if you did something, you would do with all your heart. Right? We need hope. We need something to look forward to. That's why everything shouldn't be given uh, in the very beginning. And another part, uh, another reason I thought was, was perfect was, what if you're not ready in the beginning? Sometimes you need to go through training to get something so that by the time you get it, you'll be ready to receive it. Kind of like winning the lottery. You're not going to win the lottery and then all of a sudden be like this financial advisor guru. You need to be someone who's good with money already and then start, you know, and then by the time you're ready and financially sound, this is when you're able to do things in a better way, right? We have to be given things at the end, not at the beginning. Right? We need to understand ourselves clearly, understand our brains clearly, or things are not going to work out the way that we want. And this is, you know, we have to, it's basically looking at yourself, like seeing the true self. What is your nature? Of course, we want things right away. But if you knew yourself really well, you'd want things properly. Right? You want things properly. And I, I think we have to look to ourselves too, see all the negative things that are happening. Like even for me, all these crappy things happening, I'm just like, Ah, oh my gosh. Like I'm my car, I'm broken in the broken down middle of the road. There's roaches in my house, but obviously they're killed now. But then it's like oh, I locked my keys in the car. I, the battery died. Oh, the police pulled me over. Oh, I lost my luggage. Like so many things are just like oh, what is going on kind of thing, right? And in your head, I'm just saying like god, what is going on? I th start thinking negative things like I'm being judged. I start thinking all these other different things. But then got to get, you know, you let your mind settle for a bit and, you know, you're like, wait a second. Most of these things are my fault. <laughs> Locking the keys in the car, my fault. Leaving the lights on, my fault. Holding the phone in my hand, right? Uh, and the police pull me over, that's my fault, right? These are my fault. And I have to look at myself and just say like, okay, what am I looking at right now? What are the things I can do better? so I don't go through the same things like I did before. And I have to reflect, reflect, fix, and renew, right? That's what we got to do. Reflect, fix, and renew. That's what we have to do, right? And we have to kind of look at ourselves. And I, I think one of the, uh, when I was, uh, that same podcast I told you about yesterday about marriage, they were saying the same thing is the whole point is not to make each other happy because no one can make you completely happy. If you think that the marriage or your husband is there just to make you happy, you're gonna be disappointed a lot. Why? Because a marriage isn't only about just being and feeling happy. There's ups and downs through it, right? It's not about getting what you want. That's not gonna make you happy in a marriage, right? You need to be challenged. You need to go through the rough times, right? And you need to make yourself, right? The, you know, if we're not ready for marriage, what's going to happen? If you're not ready for a relationship, you're not ready for, you know, for, for receiving a ton of money, you're going to lose it eventually. And this is why God, he's not going to give you the best in the very beginning. He gives you the best for what your condition and your situation is right now, enough for you to handle at this moment. 
The end point is to receive finally what you really, really desire. And you have to reach that level, right? Uh, there's, there's three points. Uh, there's two points here that I, th I thought that was really, really key uh, during this Wednesday message that I thought was really good. And uh, it was about uh, how people respond, right? How do people respond when bad things happen? And people react in three ways. Number one is uh, people run away and try to avoid it, right? Number two is they'll stand firm and persevere. And we think, oh, this is such a good one. However, the third one is uh, there are people who proactively try to do something about it, right? And those are three ways people do it, right? When you run away, the, the biggest problem with running away from your problems is it'll always remain. When you come back, it's always going to be there no matter what. It's not going to go away until it's resolved. The second one, which a lot of people think is stand firm and persevere, like you can endure, but everyone has a limitation of how much you can endure, right? But if you keep enduring, you never get rid of it, and you just keep enduring, enduring, eventually you'll fall, you'll fall over too. Enduring is not easy. Persevering is not an easy thing. But it's about being proactive and getting something done, taking action, making sure it doesn't happen again. What should I do so that I don't hold the phone in my hand again? What did I do the next day? The next day, I bought a holder for my car. And now, from now on, I just put the thing on, my, the, on, on the holder, right? So I'll never have it in my hands. That is proactive. What about leaving the lights on the car? Well, for me is I have to check it every single time. Every single time, check the lights every time. What's about the bat? You know, that's, so that's for the batteries. What about, you know... Um, the, the car being broken down yesterday, well, that's an interesting thing because even two days before, the aircon was blowing hot air and I should have checked it from two days before and I have to be more proactive in that right away. And I actually had a chance to take the car into uh, the mechanics the day before and I didn't do it, right? And I waited until it was completely broken down. And that is defensive, right? It's like when you're playing soccer, defense is great, but even if you have great defense, you can never win. Because it, the best you can do is a tie. But if you have offense, this is when you take the risks and you're able to win the game. You have to take a risk for it, right? So when we take action, what happens is we can enjoy. We can do things until the end. When we take action, what do we do? We have to change the method. We have to make ourselves. We have to make the environment. All these are different things too. We need to see things in a much different way than we did in the past, right? And I hope that when we take action... Uh, we're not going to just take action looking at the situation around us, but we need to pray and see the thing spiritually. What's going on spiritually too? Like I talked about yesterday in the Q&A about why do people get sick? A lot of times people just look at their healthy uh, eating habits or you know get their genetics checked or something else, but they don't think about the spiritual things either. We have to look at all the different points, right? You know, don't look at the problems that you see right in front of you in your hardships, but look at the spiritual problems. Look at the things that are around you too. Ultimately, it just turns to pain and suffering. So we have to look and see spiritually, physically, mentally, all those different points, but look from God's perspective and then be able to look at it and say, ah, this is what I got to do right now so the future doesn't, you know, get worse. You know, we're in a situation right now that every day in our life we have choices coming all the time. And there's success and failure before each and every one of us. And, you know, if we just endure it or if we just run away, the problem will still remain. It's not going away. There's no such thing as endure meaning, endure meaning just sit there and take all the pain until the end. No, we, got to, we have to be those that do a responsibility, take action until the end, be proactive, find ways to, so that those same mistakes don't happen again, but do it together with God, the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Son, with Jesus and the man of mission. And be, we have to be the responsible people, not just saying, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Leave me alone. No, of course, something does say have the mentality that God's going to do nothing for you. And that mentality basically means that you need to go out and do something about it because most people don't do anything, right? But we got to be those that have to take, you know, what does it mean to leave things up to God, right? What does it mean to, to rely on God? Relying on God meaning don't just rely on God meaning like, God, you're going to do everything. No, I do all my responsibility and I leave it up to God to finish up, you know, like to, to give the result. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all my responsibility and I'm going to leave it to God that I did my responsibility. Now, God, it's up to you. God's going to help you. God's going to help all of us. He's going to take action with us. He's going to add to the effort, add to the hard work. And that's why we got to just entrust it. Take action, do your responsibility and just trust everything to God. Entrust it.
All these things that we want in the end are all going to be there. It's all achieved at the end. It takes, you know, it's gonna, sometimes it takes a long time, but we have to do it until the end. And this is when we overcome. Right? Remember, God is the Alpha and Omega, which means He does it. Once He starts something, He never stops until it is done. God will not allow things to end in difficulty. God will not allow your life to end in tribulation. He will not allow it to end in the hardships. No, God, if you do it to the end, God will not allow those difficult things to end. It will end in victory. It'll end with answers. It'll end with the, with the exact thing that you wanted. And that's why we have to have that mentality of having faith until the end with God no matter what. And how much more right now at this time with Sunstein's situation when his trial starts today, things could be so bleak, but why is Sunstein giving us this message? Because this is the mentality of Sunstein, what he has right now, and we can't lose hope, especially when Sunstein's not losing hope. But we can't lose hope. If Sunstein, the person in the situation, isn't losing hope, and he's trusting in God until the end, how much more should we be believing, having hope and faith that things will happen in the way that God wants? Right? So I, I hope that everyone uh, really realized and uh, deeply from the Wednesday message. If you got any other points, go ahead, leave in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about uh, you, the Wednesday message for you guys too. But uh, yeah, that is it, guys. That is the end of the Wednesday message for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, leave a comment below if you have anything else for there. Which leads us into the last song of choice for uh, this Friday, which is a musical Friday. But I've changed it up to songs from movies. And I want you guys to leave in the comments and guess what movie this comes from. So uh, this one should be more recent, way more recent than all the other movies I've done. So all the Gen Zs, you should all be getting this one too. So what movie was this song from? It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you again Damn, who knew? All the planes we flew, good things we've been through Then I'll be standing right here talking to you About another path I know we love to hit the road and laugh But something told me that it wouldn't last Had to switch up, look at things different See the bigger picture Those were the days, hard work forever pays Now I see you in a better place See you in a better place Ah, uh, how can we not talk about family When family's all that we got Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side And now you gon' be with me for the last it's ride It's been a long day Without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it When I see you again, I see you again. We've come a long way, yeah, a long way From where we began you know we started. Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you when I see you again First you both go out your way and the vibe is feeling strong It was small, turned to a friendship, a friendship turned to a bond And that bond will never be broken, the love will never get lost and when brotherhood come first, then the line will never be crossed Established it on our own when that line had to be drawn And that line is what we reach, so remember me when I'm gone How can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I went through, you were standing there by my side And now you gon' be with me for the last ride let the light guide you away Yeah Every road you take
And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you And there it is, the song of choice for today. Uh, what movie did that come from? And of course, uh, this movie is a franchise, so you need to tell me the number of which uh, of what movie that is too. So go ahead, check that out. Put in the comments below what movie did that song actually come from, all right? So that brings us into the last segment for today and for the entire week, and we all look forward to this. Everyone, please welcome with another awesome episode of Let's Testify with Thule from Australia. G'day guys, this is Tully and this is the next episode of Let's Testify. Whether you have just started listening to Let's Testify or you've been with us for a while, welcome. This is a great platform for us to share with each other across the world, share our experiences and our testimonies. And I hope that today's segment is going to fill you up with some new ideas and inspirations about how to keep yourself and friends around you positive. Today, I'll be going through a list that has been shared with me from a member of 13 activities or approaches or philosophies to keeping yourself positive. And I've also selected a few from the past month that people have commented on and that they found really true for themselves. So let's start with the 13 points of what keeps this person positive. I like to think of these as mini one-liner testimonies because it's what these people have tried and tested and now they're passing these testimonies on to us. So here we go. Number one, when negative thoughts come, like it's not working, I can't get inspiration or what I've done is trash, then cry out to God and ask for the thing that you lack. So it could be a creative outcome, it could be an ability or the, the ability to improve, and God's going to give you that thing. Uh, does, doesn't that remind you of how Pastor John's been talking to us recently? Like if you don't have that desire to pray, then ask for it. Yeah, ask God for that desire to pray. Um, number two, do things that lean towards or result in good feelings. That's a great idea. Do things that lean towards or result in good feelings. Number three, you can say to yourself, if this person can do it, so can I. That's like something in song. What was it? Um, yeah, the one if, you know, I looked at people who could do it and then I copied them and I could do it too. I can't remember the name of that song. And uh, number four, I can do this. Yeah, that really helps when you're feeling lacking. Yeah, you can tell yourself, I can do this. Number five, give lots of benefit of the doubt for example if someone's complaining about someone else then instead of joining in you can respond like this oh maybe he's just having a bad day and then they might respond with oh hey gosh you're such a, a nice person you've always seen the best in people lean towards giving the benefit of the doubt uh, number six actively avoid negative emotions and things that cause them in yourself and from others for example if you know with the story about or oh, maybe he's just having a bad day that brushes away any awkward negativity of the person complaining so really just expand your heart and give people the benefit of the doubt number seven so this is a philosophy to take on project positivity to the world because of all the negativity that is prevalent around us so really work on projecting positivity and so things talk to us so much about the soul world like people's souls are interacting we can't see the souls but our soul can be active so you know think really positive thoughts about yourself about people about your situations and people can feel these things because we are spiritual beings number eight this is the simple strategy of asking this question what is the positive in this What's the positive in it? 
We know good things don't always come in pleasant packages. Good things can come in difficult situations. Good things can come when you receive negative comments about yourself, when you receive negative feedback. There's always something positive that we can gain from what we go through. So ask yourself, what's the positive in what I'm going through? Number nine, have someone you can vent frustrations to. It helps to flush out negativity faster. Yeah, I believe that uh, in a professional setting, it's probably better to have someone outside of your job to do this with, but it really depends on your situation. Um, number 10, have things that you can do to cheer yourself up. So this person likes to dance or have a cup of tea, sit outside in the sun or hug someone. <laughs> um, this reminds me of when I was a young, like year nine or year 10 student, and my violin teacher would give me some pieces that were just based on certain violin techniques. So there was one one piece of music, it was very old and it had such an old musty feeling to it, like it's something you'd play on a gramophone. He knew that I didn't like it. So he said, okay, just point to two bars out of the music, just point to a tiny bit out of the music that you do like. And I said, right, you know, it's that bit there. It only lasted like three seconds. And he said, okay, play this piece so that you can play those couple of bars there and so then when I played the piece of music I had a focus I had something that I was looking forward to enjoying in that piece of music and that gave me a reason to go through that thing so something positive to cheer yourself up about number 11 call the trinity when you're afraid of the unknown and the future amen yeah call the trinity when you're afraid of the unknown and the future there's no better way. That's excellent. Yeah, call the Trinity. Number 12, pray for God to lead you so that as you take action, you can be confident, right? There are so many things we don't know about in this world, but as we pray to God and we trust that he's leading us, that can make us confident. And the last one in this list of 13, so start sentences like this. Start sentences with, well, at least dot, 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 for example, if you break a glass, well, at least no one is hurt. Okay, so, well, at least. Okay, so again, you're looking for something that's positive, even within a negative situation. Thank you so much uh, for sending those in. They're really wonderful. And I'm sure there are so many of you who are listening who have also got a few tips even one tip, two tip, feel, tip, two tips, <laughs> feel free to send them in uh, through the email address below. And I will just wrap up with a few from the past month that have stuck out uh, to me. So love is patient. Love is kind. You have to apply this to others, but also to yourself. The way that you perceive yourself is really important. So when you make mistakes, apply this to yourself. So being, being uh, patient to yourself and kind to yourself. And the last one. Yeah, thanking God in advance that he will absolutely answer your prayers and that he will absolutely fulfill his promises to you, promises in the word and promises in the Bible. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful week and let's keep praying for each other in Providence and supporting each other too. Have a wonderful weekend. Peace. And thank you so much, Tuli, for another wonderful episode of Let's Testify. I hope a lot of you guys are receiving a lot of inspiration and grace from this, too. And if you have anything you want to comment, go ahead, leave it below for Tuli. I'm sure uh, she has been answering to a lot of the comments below also, uh, which leads us, you know, this is the end of uh, the Friday, my third week here in uh, Malaysia. I hope that everyone really, really is enjoying these podcasts. Uh, have an amazing and awesome weekend. Make sure to pray for the trial today once again. And we'll see you guys again on Monday on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. You saw me up with Sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in. Zone, you know, I'm on the morning star drive, you know, I'm burning with desire and the passion, nobody can stop me when I'm like this, I got my head in the zone, you know, I'm on the morning star drive, you know.